What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video we're going to check out an extension that allows you to create different site grading conditions inside of SketchUp. Before we get started I want to say a big thank you to my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Enrico Martino, Luke Kruger, Petit The, Rob LeBlanc, James Lees, Ed Rutan, Riviera Paul, Adib Zylan, Devikun, Michael Branding Caps, and Sebastian. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Plugin name, site grader in UI. Plugin developer, Valley Architects. Plugin cost, it's $15 a year or $118 a year for the entire Valley Architects suite. Where can you get it? You can download it from the Valley Architects site or at the link in the notes down below. Tool functions. This extension is designed to help you create different grades inside of SketchUp. One of the things that can be kind of challenging when working inside of SketchUp is creating any kind of earthwork model. And this extension is designed to help you with that. So the way it works, um, it seems complicated when you first start off, but it's really fairly simple. What you need to have is you need to have a group, which is a closed loop. So in this case, if I had something like this, which is just a flat plane, you can see how that's inside of a group, and you need to have that inside whatever group your, um, your terrain is inside of. So I need to be able to select this face, and then I need to be able to select my group. With those two options enabled, you can then come into the Site Grader toolbar, and you can click on the button for Grade Around Looper Object. So when you click on the button for grade around looper object, there's a few different presets for how this can work. So, and really they have more to do with the size than the kind of grading. So um, there is there is both a grading setting and then a very cut fill. But um, in general, you're just gonna wanna look at these and figure out how much space you have because the amount of space that you have is gonna affect the way this extension works. In this case, we're just gonna select the option for medium, very cut fill, and we'll just click the X button. And so what you can do is you can come in here and you can adjust the parameters to adjust the size of the grading that's gonna happen. So like right now, I have the option set for the shoulder or the size of the grading off of this space to be set to a width of five feet. But I could also set that to a variable. So like, let's say I didn't want this to have a whole lot of space on the top, but I did want this to have more space on the bottom, I could adjust that here. Um, in this case, we're just gonna leave this at equal width and we're just gonna leave it at five feet. And we're just gonna click the button for grade. When I click the button for grade, this is gonna go through and this is gonna work and this is actually gonna grade this space in here um, so that I have a flat space along this face. So if I go to view and hidden geometry, you can see how this goes in here and this creates this based on the floor plate you've selected. And so this is going to work for more complex shapes as well. So let's say I have a stepping shape like this one, and you know, we do the same thing. So I'll just turn hidden geometry off and select this face, and then do a shift click and select this group. And again, remember the edges need to be in a closed loop in here. But what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to go in with both of those selected and we're just going to select the option for grade around looper object again. Maybe we'll select the large very cut fill and we'll go into our parameters and we'll set our parameters to something more like 10 feet. So that'll give us more width around this area that's being graded to. And I'm just going to click the button for grade again. And so that's going to come in here and that's going to work and that's going to grade based off of this space. And the one thing that you should be aware of and that you should see on here is that there, this did erase out this face inside this object. It's not that big of a deal because I can just draw an edge across this face and just heal this. So you can see how now I have my space in here um, if I want that. So not only does this work for things like flat planes like these, but it also works for things like walls. So for example, if I have a wall that I've drawn into the side of this face, this will recognize that and give me a, a number of different options based on that. So like for example, let's say that I had this wall 
and I wanted to set this up so my dirt comes up against the back of it, but then at the bottom, it's graded down more flat. Well, all I have to do is just draw this the same way where my wall group is inside of my terrain group. And then I can just select this wall and do a shift click and select my terrain. You can see how now if I click inside of here, this automatically recognized that this was drawn as a wall and it gives me options for um, different kinds of grading. So the naming conventions in here um, really have to do with the different kinds of slopes and other things this is creating. So like for example, you've got your small, medium, and large again, but you've got this set up where this does the top and the bottom, or just the bottom, or just the top. So it gives you a bunch of different options for different things that you can adjust. So um, like for example, you can set this so that this matches the slope. You can also set this where this uh, comes in here and it like fills in the top of the wall and not necessarily the bottom. There's a lot of different options in here. In this case, I'm going to select the option for, I'm looking for, sometimes it's a little easier just to use the drop down. Um, so I just want the medium top bottom. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna click on that. And then it's gonna ask if I wanna edit the style. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. And we're just gonna go into our parameters. You can see how there's different options for the different kinds of, for the different kinds of sloping you can do. So like for example, a horizontal top is gonna to flatten out the dirt um, up, up, up above the top here. Um, a horizontal top and bottom is gonna flatten out both the top and the bottom on both sides of this wall. So let's say for now that we have a horizontal top and we'll go ahead and leave that width at eight feet. That means that's gonna give us an eight foot width. And then at the bottom, we'll just leave this sloping. And then we're just gonna click the button for grade. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna come in here and this is gonna create our grade. You can see how what it does, if we turn on our hidden geometry again, is it flattens out the top of this, um, this grade kind of following the grade of the hill right here. So you can see how you get about an eight foot width between where the grading starts and where your wall is. And so this could be really good for giving you like a path up above your wall or something like that. And if we were to undo this, and let's go back in and do it again, but this time in our parameters, we're gonna set a horizontal top and bottom and we'll leave the width at eight feet. And we're gonna click grade again. And so this is gonna look a little bit different this time because what it's gonna do now is it's gonna give us that eight foot width up here, but then it's also giving us that eight foot width down here. So you can see how that came in here and that flattened this out as opposed to leaving it kind of hilly. So one nice feature contained within this extension is the ability to come in here and make adjustments once your terrain edges have been created. So like for example, and we can kind of look at this right here, let's say you wanted to adjust the edges of this piece of terrain, you could use this button for adjust terrain edge height. We're gonna go ahead and say yes on most of this, but you can see how you can come in here and you can single click, and then you can move your mouse up or down and you can move the edges of this terrain up or down. So from a more practical standpoint, you can use this to adjust grading um, with things like building floor plates or houses. And the way that would work, and I'm gonna turn x-ray mode on so you can see this, is I've gone in here and I've drawn a closed loop around this house. So you can see how as I select this, this is a loop that runs along the outside of the house like this and kind of around the bottom here. So if I select that closed loop, and I've just kind of drawn that in there and we'll turn x-ray mode back off and we select this face and we run instant site grader. Uh, what we need to do is we need to go in and we need to go in and maybe select the option for large. And we're just gonna set our parameters. One thing that's really important is that we make sure that our parameters don't place us off the edge of this space. So I wanna make sure this isn't 15 feet, we're good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this to maybe a general width of like 20 feet or something like that. I'm just gonna click the grade button. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna grade this out 15 feet off of the lines that I've drawn. So what this allows you to do is this allows you to kind of draw it basically allows you to draw an edge that you can slope to inside of this uh, inside of this object. So like for example, you can see how this is now sloping to the edge of the line that I drew around this perimeter. And so let's say I wanted to come in here and I just wanted to create kind of a building pad that sits outside of this building itself. What I could do is, 
I could go inside this group and just draw a flat plane. So kind of like this one right here. And then I could double click on it and I could make that a group. Well, you can see how that gives me a closed group inside of this object. And then I could just select this face. And one thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut this group and I'm gonna have to go into my group where I have my raw face here and just do an edit paste in place. But you can select the two of these and then you can use the uh, grader functions in order to grade this to give me a flat space. And I set this so that it would have a 10 inch slope on the outside of this flat face. You can see how this is gonna come in here and this is gonna allow me to create a flat pad that everything slopes to. So if I turn on my hidden geometry, you can see how I've got slopes around the edges that are sl sloping to this point right here. So, and you can also, when you're doing this, you can set this where it'll place materials on this shoulder. So like, for example, if you wanted this to place like a gravel material in here, um, it would do that along this shoulder. So that's an option in here as well. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Do you like this extension? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.